expire as of uh, tomorrow night. The 354 million, you may recall, started out as being over 500 million. Uh, the, the mayor uh, said we're going to have over 500 million for the city. All of a sudden, it got uh, went down to 354 million. What's not being told, though, is of that 354 million, it'll cost 120 million dollars to implement uh, the program. And of that 120 million, that money cannot come out of the 354 million, which means that a separate allocation from the city budget will have to come out for $120 million to implement the, uh, the congestion pricing plan. Also, it's a one-shot deal. It's not an annual appropriation of $350 million, as some people might think, but it's a one-shot deal. This plan is, a, is poorly conceived. It's a bad plan for a lot of reasons. This started out with a very noble cause when the mayor announced the initiative about a year ago. It started out as a plan to reduce congestion in Manhattan, which everybody agrees needs to be reduced. It also started out as a plan uh, to help the environment, uh, to uh, address asthma and uh, try to remove some of the, uh, the evil, some of the bad uh, things that go into the air with all the congestion. It has since degenerated and, and has nothing to do with reducing congestion anymore in Manhattan. It's now all about the money to plug a potential capital budget deficit for the MTA or to provide for MTA's future capital needs. The problem with that is that this plan will be paid for. The plan is supposed to subsidize the MTA's capital budget to, for the entire region is going to be paid for only by those individuals that rely on the free bridges into Manhattan. So what do I mean by that? The Queensboro Bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge, the Williamsburg Bridge, and the Manhattan Bridge. It is only those individuals and small businesses that rely on the deliveries over their bridges that will be taxed to provide the entire revenue stream that is supposed to solve the MTA's capital budget plan. And I say that that is unfair. This is nothing but a regressive tax. Who are the individuals and small businesses that rely on the free bridges? The middle class people, the people that commute uh, from Brooklyn and Queens and, and the Bronx to businesses in Manhattan that drive from their homes to uh, places in Manhattan, they park in a garage and they go home at night. Those are not the individuals that are causing the congestion problems in Manhattan. What's causing the congestion problems in Manhattan are the, the violations of the double park cars, the triple park cars, the black cars, the taxi cabs, and all the commercial vehicles that are um, making deliveries in the middle of the day. I, had, I proposed a 10-point plan to reduce congestion in Manhattan. But you know what? It was ignored by the uh, commission that was appointed to study this issue. Why was it ignored? Because it didn't provide revenue for the MTA. I proposed um, having off-hour deliveries for commercial deliveries, giving incentives to businesses to have off-hour deliveries, having more taxi stands, uh, and preventing taxis from uh, picking up and discharging passengers in the middle of the street, which clearly uh, adds to congestion. I propose putting money in the capital budget for building municipal parking garages in locations outside of Midtown Manhattan, at Long Island Railroad stops in the city, at um, subway uh, hubs, where if they had municipal garages, people that are not accessible to public transportation, such as my district in Eastern Queens. Most of my constituents in Eastern Queens uh, four or five miles from the nearest subway, the one, the F train at, at 179th Street, Jamaica, which is one of the most overcrowded uh, trains in the entire system. Uh, in most cases, most of my constituents are not on an express bus line. They have to travel a mile or more to an express bus. They have to get in their car to get somewhere. And if there's, if there's nowhere to park and it's not accessible, they feel it's easier to go into Manhattan than they have to for their livelihood. So this will be a tax that will disproportionately affect the middle class. It'll affect uh, those people that rely on the free bridges, not to mention, and you'll hear from the small business owners, the small businesses that rely on uh, going over the free bridges for deliveries multiple times in multiple vehicles on many occasions, and $21 a, a person uh, will be passed on to the consumer uh, when it can be, and of course that'll affect everyone. Uh, I'm now gonna call upon uh, former Councilman Walter McCaffrey. Thank you very much, uh, Council Member. Uh, let me just address one of the aspects that has been floating around in the last couple of days. 
and that's the discussion of having congestion pricing set up as a pilot program. Uh, there are very significant and fatal flaws to that concept. Uh, first of all, the MTA has said that it would cost $767 million in capital costs and an additional $104 million in operating costs to be able to prepare for congestion pricing. Now, for a three-year pilot to generate that and to be able to come up with the type of funds that are needed, that after those three years, there would not have been a single solitary dollar that would have been net revenue increase for mass transit improvements. I mean, that is something that is quite astounding when you look at the statistics alone. Secondly, we are being told that, well, we can make changes uh, to deal with some of the issues. If you come over the Queensboro Bridge and go north, you will then end up being in a situation there where you won't have to pay the fee. Well, to the people in Long Island City and Sunnyside and Woodside and Astoria who were told that traffic was going to be decreased with the concomitant impacts in terms of pollution, that has now gone out the window. It just goes to show the proposal as being a fraud. And lastly, they've tried to throw in an additional element. And that is to end up saying that there will be opportunities for minority and women business enterprises under this program. Now, quite frankly, having had a long track record dealing with those issues, I have to say that that is a cruel hoax. Cranes last October did an analysis of the track record of the MTA. And in that analysis, they said that they weren't even coming to 50% of their targets for minority and women business enterprise participation. Pretty shocking, considering the type of budget that they have. They don't have a mentorship program that is first rate, similar to the quality of the school construction authority in the city of New York. Secondly, despite the very strong position of Mayor Bloomberg in advocating for minority and women business enterprises, the agencies around here haven't gotten that message. And in their report to the city council under local law 129 last year, they showed how dismal a record the city agencies have now in providing those type of opportunities, for example, in construction to minority and women business enterprises. And lastly, the federal government's involvement here with its disadvantaged business enterprise program is ludicrous. Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez, who chairs the House Committee on Small Business, <coughs> has repeatedly pointed out how the federal government has abandoned the real legitimate needs of minority and business enterprises. This was simply thrown in in a last minute act of desperation to try to get political votes in Albany. Nothing more than that. It's a sham. It has no connection to reality. So in the closing hours, when you hear them say anything to try to get votes, be suspicious. The track record of those folks who they say are going to be able to do these things has to be looked at. And when you look at it, you realize that they're a miserable failure. In the final analysis, the people of the city of New York are entitled to be able to see everything that's going on. Transparency has been an issue all over city and state government. They have not seen any of these options that are being presented out there at the last minute. Ultimately, congestion pricing is to be judged on whether or not it is sound public policy. This is not sound public policy, and it should be rejected. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. I'm now going to call upon Jan Lee, uh, who's a, a business owner in uh, China.